Detective Explainer here. Today, I'm going to explain a sensual thriller film called, A Housemaid. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It's another busy night in the city streets. An assortment of meats is grilling on each side, all manners of seafood are poking out of their tanks, and young men and women populate the several bars and lounges in the buildings. Suddenly, a loud thud is heard from a nearby block. A young woman had jumped off a building. Slowly, the crowd starts to gather as the woman's body lay bleeding on the ground. An ambulance comes in, but with the woman already dead at that point, they could only retrieve her body. Later that night, Lee Yoon Hee persuades her co-worker to drive her to the scene where the suicide took place. There, Yoon Hee becomes distraught upon seeing the chalk outline of the body. The next morning, an older woman named Byung Sik, also known as Miss Cho, visits Yoon Hee. She is the head housemaid of Yoon Hee's soon-to-be employer. The woman explains that she wanted to see how Yoon Yi lives since she wishes to be thorough about who she's hiring. Eventually, Yoon Yi is hired as a live-in housemaid. On her first day at the job, Miss Cho introduces her to her new employers. First is Hera, who is currently pregnant with twins. After doing Hera's laundry, she then meets her young daughter Nami in the afternoon. When Nami returns from school, Yoon Yi is already at the door to greet her, making extra effort to ensure that Nami notices her. Yoon Yi and Miss Cho help themselves to the excessive leftovers that the family had not eaten. Moments later, the father of the household, Hun, arrives after a day of work. He greets Yoon Yi warmly and orders Miss Cho to send up a bottle of wine once he goes upstairs. Miss Cho prepares the glasses and instructs Yoon Yi to take them to Hun. The new housemaid complies, then sets down the tray on the table while the married couple talks about Yoon Yi. They mention her being a graduate of an early childhood education degree then comment about how she'll be good with children. That evening, when Yun Yi goes to bed, Nami asks her to leave the door partially ajar so she wouldn't be afraid to sleep. Yun Yi does so before smiling at Nami, who sleeps in the adjacent room. The next morning, Yun Yi and Miss Cho prepare breakfast. Yun Yi takes the tray of food to Hoon's piano room, where Hoon is currently playing in. While he's playing piano, Yun Yi looks wistfully at her new master, and she starts to develop a crush on him. Later, Miss Cho is asked to leave the door partially ajar so she wouldn't be afraid to the family says goodbye to Hoon before he heads off to work. In the bathroom, Yoon Yi helps Hei Ra in the tub as she bathes. When evening comes, Yoon Yi cleans up the tub, making sure that it's prepared for Hoon once he gets home. Hoon catches her in the middle of cleaning with her skirt hitched up high, leaving him to stand there while staring at her thighs. One day, the family decides to go to the local hot spring, and they decided to bring Yoon Yi with them. With Yoon Yi wearing her swimsuit, Hoon eyes her while she goes to help Nami in the pool. Later that evening, Hoon and Hei Ra are making love, but Hei Ra struggles with it due to her pregnancy. They're forced to stop, much to Hoon's frustration. When Hei Ra falls asleep, Hoon comes downstairs to find Yoon Yi in her bed half naked. Realizing that Hoon is there, she covers up her body with a blanket. However, Hoon only tells her to be quiet, then gives her a glass of wine. He orders her to take off the blanket, and with that, he starts seducing her and touching her all over her body. The two of them end up sleeping together. Slash slash unbeknownst to anyone in the house. The following day, Yoon Yi remains warm and supportive towards the oblivious Hei Ra despite her affair with her mistress's husband. During the day, Yoon Yi and Hoon act as if everything is normal, but the two of them continue to steal glances at one another. That evening, Hoon goes to visit Yoon Yi in her room, and they sleep together again. However, Miss Cho was still awake at that hour, and while she's walking about, she witnesses them in the act. The following morning, Miss Cho watches Yoon Yi closely. She goes to prepare breakfast, and as usual, Yoon Yi would be taking the food in Hoon's piano room. Miss Cho notes that Yoon Yi is wearing makeup that morning, and she watches Yoon Yi from outside the piano room. In the room, Hoon hands Yoon Yi her check while she's constantly smiling at him and trying to look pretty. Later, Yoon Yi goes to massage Hei Ra while continuing to warmly support her in her pregnancy. The sight revolts Ms. Cho. And she's repulsed that Yoon Yi is so two-faced as to behave cheerfully around Hei Ra like she's not screwing her husband behind her back. After a day of work, Ms. Cho makes conversation with Yoon Yi while subtly trying to pry the truth out of her. Of course, Yoon Yi casually dismisses her questions. Here, Ms. Cho shares her negative views about working for rich people. She goes on to call the job runs, which stands for revolting, ugly, nauseating, and shameless. Eventually, Miss Cho reports the affair to Hei Ra's mother, Mi He. Miss Cho tells her that she thinks that Yoon Yi is pregnant and that Yoon Yi herself might not know it yet. 
In order to confirm this, Mi plans to stage an accident. Meanwhile, Yun Yi speaks with her friend and tells her about her situation with Mr. Hoon. This surprises her friend, and she tries to dissuade Yun Yi from working there any further. However, Yun Yi doesn't heed any of her friend's advice, and she continues to work in the household. One day, Yun Yi is on a ladder to dust the chandelier. While she's in the middle of this, Mihi walks by together with Hera and Nami. Mihi intentionally trips so she can push the ladder that Yun Yi's on. She ends up dangling from the chandelier, clinging tightly to it for dear life. She tries asking Mihi for help, but the woman doesn't do a thing and even goes as far as to stop her daughter from helping as well. Yun Hee ends up falling from the second floor, and she's promptly taken to the hospital. There, she's given several tests, including a pregnancy test. Mihi planned for this sudden hospital visit so they could monitor if Yun Yi really is pregnant. Back at the household, Mihi reveals to Hei Ra that Hoon and Yun Yi are having an affair. Hei Ra is shocked and disappointed, but her mother cynically tells her that infidelity comes with the territory of marrying a rich man like Hoon. As for whom, he's unaware of all these events since he's recently left for a business trip, leaving Hei Ra and her mother to plot against Yun Yi. Overall, Yun Yi sustained minor injuries, and she's to spend the night in the hospital. Before she is discharged, Yun Yi discovers that her pregnancy test result came out as positive. She talks to her friend about having an abortion, and her friend insists that it would be best for her to quit her job, whether she goes through with an abortion or not. Back at the household, Hei Ra's ever cynical mother tells her not to resent Hoon, as he was born getting everything he wanted, regardless if it was right or not. She goes on to explain that her mother-in-law suffered because all the men in Hoon's family were just like him, but eventually, she became respected by everyone. She told her to endure it for now, let Hoon sleep around, and one day, she'll live like a queen. That evening, Hei Ra visits Yoon He's room while holding a golf club. She intends to smash the club against Yoon He's head while she was sleeping, but, in the end, she couldn't go through with it. Miss Cho sees this happening and watches Hei Ra's frustration. The following day, Yoon He tells Miss Cho that she thinks she should quit. With her growing concern for Yoon He's safety, Miss Cho urges her to pack her things and leave immediately. Yoon He doesn't take Miss Cho's advice, and she ends up being confronted by Hei Ra and her mother within that very day. Hei Ra repeatedly slaps Yoon Yi, and Yoon Yi, not realizing that they know of her affair, could only bow her head shamefully and ask for forgiveness. Mihi then hands her a check worth a large sum of money, demanding her to get an abortion. If she gets the baby aborted, then they can forget about the entire thing and move on. Despite Mihi's insistence, Hei Ra suspects that Yoon Yi won't go through with the abortion. After all, she observed that Yoon Yi was close to Nami, and she would likely never give up her own child. Meanwhile, Yoon Yi herself struggles with whether she wants to keep the baby or not. Miss Cho urges her to get rid of the baby so that she could be safe from the rich family since they won't stop until they get what they want. However, talking with Nami only encouraged her to keep the baby. Nami tells her that she saw Mihi push her from the ladder, and Nami apologizes to her, even saying that Yoon Yi is a good person, still suspecting that Yoon Yi won't push through with the abortion. Hei Ra decides to take matters into her own hands. With this in mind, she poisons the herbal medicine that Yoon Yi drinks every day. Eventually, Yoon Yi decides that she wants to keep the baby, and she reports this to Ms. Cho. Still concerned, Ms. Cho warns her that the people they're working for are dangerous. Yoon Yi's liable to getting hurt if she doesn't give them what they want. While Ms. Cho is loyal to her employers, she's still looking out for Yoon Yi. Hoon returns from his business trip, then goes to see Hei Ra in the hospital as she's now going through labor. When the twins are delivered, Hoon visits his wife in the ward. Before leaving for home to get a change of clothes, Hei Ra kisses Hoon angrily, which confuses him. Hoon returns home to find Yoon He in their bathtub. Outraged, Hoon asks what Yoon He is doing there, and she answers him with the truth. She reveals that she's pregnant with his baby, and his family is paying her to get an abortion. Miss Jo comes in, and Yoon He tells both her and Hoon that she wants to keep the baby. Suddenly, Yoon Hee wails in pain as the bathtub fills with her blood. Later, while she's crumpled up in pain, she tells Hoon again that she wants to keep the baby, even promising to leave them peacefully. Knowing that the poisoned medicine might have already given her a miscarriage, Hoon agrees to keep the baby. Later in his piano room, Hoon confronts Mihi about the events that transpired. He demands to know if she was the one who poisoned Yoon Yi. Even though he doesn't want the baby in the first place, Hoon remains offended that his mother-in-law would poison his own child. Yoon Yi is taken to the hospital. In there, she's forced to undergo an abortion without her consent, fully eliminating the possibility of having the baby. 
the only person to stay with her during the abortion is Miss Cho, who's now feeling remorseful about how things ended up. Yun Yi partly blames Miss Cho for what happened since she's the one who told Mihi about her affair, and the woman could only apologize to her. Yun Yi tells her that she wants to get revenge somehow for what the family had done to her. Yun Yi is now back at her old apartment with her friend. During one night her friend tells her that it would be best to just forget about the whole thing. Inconsolable, Yun Yi cries in the corner of the bed, repeating the word runs over and over again. When Yun Yi has recovered from the abortion, Miss Cho helps her sneak into the house. Here, Hoon catches Yun Yi breastfeeding one of the twins. With an increasingly unstable state of mind, Yun Yi lingers around the house while refusing to leave. The entire family gathers in the living room. Mi Yi, Hoon, Hei Ra, Nami, and the twin babies are all there. Hei Ra orders Ms. Cho to chase Yun Yi out of the house, but Ms. Cho, poised and calm as ever, refuses to. She quits right there on the spot, finally having had enough of the family's immoral behavior. Suddenly, Yun Yi emerges from the second floor to torment the family by slyly talking to Nami, leading the child to ask about what happened to the baby in her tummy. To no avail, Ms. Cho tries convincing Yun Yi to abandon her plan and just leave the place with her. Since Yun Yi remains dedicated to seeing her plan through, she apologizes to both Nami and her twin siblings. She asks them to never forget about her before taking a rope and hanging herself on the same chandelier she once clung to. The family could only watch in horror while Yun Yi chokes to her death, but she doesn't stop there. She lights herself on fire as the terrified family looks on, and Miss Cho simply turns around to take her leave. Eventually, the sprinklers start running, and the family finally leaves the house, too. From outside, Nami stares at the swinging and burning body of Yun Yi before her father ushers her to leave with them. The lasting scars from the horror that the family was subjected to remain. They spend Nami's birthday outdoors in the snow with everyone speaking in English. Mi Yi is sat down, carrying the twins in both arms, her face unreadable as she stares at nothing in particular. Hoon appears overjoyed with a big smile on his face while doting on his daughter and opening the champagne bottle. Nami looks slowly between her parents before walking away from her unhinged family. While her detached mother and overzealous father each take a seat, the girl looks on in the distance. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.